We begin tonight with Flight 370. The major new clue, was it deliberately brought down? They lied about where MH370 is. The story we were all told was incomplete. How can you lose a jetliner? How can it vanish in thin air? The massive, expensive search for the vanished Boeing 777 was focused on an area of the ocean where the plane simply was not. But the truth has a way of coming out. Thanks to a breakthrough analysis of billions of faint radio signals, the real flight path has been uncovered. It leads to a specific hidden zone that was never properly searched. And the details reveal a final few hours for the aircraft that are far more chilling than anyone imagined. The multi-million dollar mistake. Let's go back to that fateful night. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 takes off from Kuala Lumpur on March 8, 2014, headed for Beijing. At 1.19 in the morning, the last routine message comes over the radio. Good night, Malaysian 370. Then, pure silence. The plane's transponder, which tells air traffic control where it is, goes dark. Military radar then tracks the jet doing something unbelievable. It makes a sharp turn west, flying back over the Malay Peninsula and out over the Malacca Strait before it completely vanishes into the vast, dark Indian Ocean. What happened next shaped one of the most expensive and, frankly, hopeless search operations in history. A British company called Inmarsat came forward with data from its satellites. They said they detected automated handshakes, tiny electronic pings between the plane and a satellite that continued for hours after it disappeared from radar. These pings, they claimed, created giant arcs of possibility across the southern Indian Ocean. But here's where the official story starts to completely fall apart. The search focused only on the seventh arc, the location of the final ping. This was where investigators assumed the massive Boeing 777, a plane weighing over 300,000 pounds, ran out of fuel and plunged into the sea. This huge assumption was based on three critical ideas that were, to put it mildly, shaky. First, they believed the plane flew on autopilot in a perfectly straight line. Second, they assumed its fuel use was totally predictable. And third, they believed all the plane's systems worked normally the whole time. Each of these ideas was a house of cards just waiting to fall. The thing nobody tells you is that modern jets don't just fly straight when left alone. They react to wind, shifts in weight, and flight plans. Fuel use can change wildly based on height, speed, and weather. And most importantly, if something was wrong with MH370 systems, either a mechanical problem or deliberate human action, then every single calculation based on normal flight is totally worthless. Search teams scoured an area of ocean bigger than the entire state of Pennsylvania. They used the most advanced underwater robots and sonar that could spot something as small as a car on the ocean floor, thousands of feet down. Yet after three long years of looking, they found absolutely nothing. Not a single piece of the main wreckage, not the black boxes, just an empty, silent ocean. The families of the passengers watched this unfold with growing anger. They started asking tough questions. Why were huge parts of the supposed impact zone never even searched properly? Why did the mapping of the ocean floor show massive underwater canyons and mountains, places that could easily hide a 200-foot-long airplane from any sonar? The silence from the authorities was deafening. Eventually, the search was called off. Official reports talked about unprecedented challenges. But behind the scenes, a different truth was bubbling to the surface, one that would change everything. What they didn't know was that a completely different kind of signal was about to reveal the truth, a web of digital tripwires. While the world's most powerful governments were looking at satellites, a global network of everyday people was accidentally recording the truth. These were amateur radio fans, or ham radio operators, and they were quietly logging something extraordinary. Every two minutes, 24 hours a day, a web of very faint radio signals crisscrosses our planet. Think of it like a giant, invisible spiderweb covering the globe. This network is called the Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, or WSPR. It wasn't designed to track a missing 700,000-pound airplane. It was built by hobbyists to see how far their low-power signals could travel. 
But a retired British aerospace engineer named Richard Godfrey saw something that everyone else had missed. You see, he had a crazy idea. What if a massive metal jet flying through this delicate web of radio signals disturbed it? What if the plane's body, its powerful engines, and its very presence in the sky left behind tiny, invisible footprints in these signals? What if it left electronic breadcrumbs marking its real journey? The idea is almost too simple to be true. Radio waves travel through the air in predictable ways, bouncing and bending around things. But when a huge object like a Boeing 777 flies through these signal paths, Godfrey believed it creates what he calls tripwires. These are tiny, split-second changes in the signal's strength, timing, and frequency. And the best part? Every single one of these disturbances gets automatically recorded and stored in the giant WSPR database. Godfrey spent years writing special software to dig through this mountain of data. He wasn't just looking for signals getting weaker or stronger. He was hunting for strange timing, tiny shifts in frequency, and patterns that just didn't make sense. For the night MH370 went missing, he downloaded and processed over 200 billion lines of raw data. It was like an archaeological dig, but instead of dirt, he was sifting through electromagnetic noise to find the ghost of the plane. His computer programs eventually found around 130 strong anomalies, disturbances that couldn't be explained by weather, sunspots, or equipment glitches. But here's the wow factor that changes everything. These disturbances were not random. When plotted on a map, they formed a clear flight path. It started right where MH370 was last seen on military radar and traced a route curving southwest, then south across the Indian Ocean. It was the exact kind of path you'd expect from a plane trying to avoid being seen while flying towards one of the most remote places on Earth. Even more incredible was the timing. Godfrey's trip wires lined up almost perfectly with the official satellite handshakes from Inmarsat, happening within minutes of each ping. The thing is, this couldn't be a coincidence. If WSPR could really detect the plane passing through the radio signals, those detections should happen at the exact same time as the satellite pings. And they did. The precision was mind-blowing. While the official search gave them a huge arc of ocean hundreds of miles wide, Godfrey's analysis narrowed the search path to a corridor just over 12 miles wide. Instead of searching an area the size of a country, they could now focus on a narrow strip of ocean. But despite this incredible breakthrough, the official search authorities didn't want to hear it. The radio tripwires had revealed the path, and now they were about to point to the exact location. Godfrey's Forbidden Coordinates The coordinates that came from Richard Godfrey's WSPR analysis are 29.128 degrees south and 99.934 degrees east. This isn't just another random spot on the map. This is a specific location about 930 miles west of Perth, Australia, in a part of the Indian Ocean that the official search teams barely glanced at. To put it mildly, it was a massive oversight. But why this exact place? The thing is, the WSPR trail doesn't just stop. It tells the story of the plane's final chilling moments. Godfrey's data shows what looks like a holding pattern, a sign that the aircraft may have actually circled in the sky before its final descent. The signal disturbances show changes in altitude, corrections to its course, and then a rapid drop, which would fit with either the plane running out of fuel or a controlled ditching into the water. And the location itself is a huge clue. The ocean floor here is not some flat, sandy bottom. This is the base of Broken Ridge, a massive underwater mountain range that rises thousands of feet from the seabed. Imagine trying to find a 200-foot-long airplane in an underwater version of the Rocky Mountains. It's filled with deep canyons that could swallow a skyscraper and volcanic ridges that create perfect hiding places. At a depth of about 13,000 feet or nearly two and a half miles, this terrain is both a challenge and an opportunity. The jagged, rocky seafloor and steep cliffs could have caught pieces of the aircraft protecting them from strong ocean currents that would normally scatter debris for thousands of miles. But those same mountains and canyons make finding anything with sonar incredibly difficult. What makes Godfrey's location so believable is how it lines up with completely separate evidence. 
Scientists who model ocean currents, the same science used to track oil spills, have shown that any debris starting at Godfrey's coordinates would drift west, towards the coast of Africa. And guess what? That's exactly where confirmed pieces of MH370 have been found. On the shores of Mauritius, Madagascar, Mozambique, and South Africa. The very first confirmed piece of wreckage, a wing part called a flapperon, washed up on Reunion Island in July 2015. French investigators confirmed it was from MH370. More importantly, ocean experts were able to trace its journey backward. Their models pointed to an origin area right around Godfrey's crash site. As more debris was found, interior panels and wing parts, they all told the same story when scientists did the reverse drift analysis. Perhaps the most shocking part is that this specific spot sits in an area that was never properly searched. Yes, search ships passed within a few dozen miles of these coordinates, but they never focused their powerful sonar on the specific underwater mountains and canyons that could be hiding the wreckage. The mapping data we have shows underwater features that could easily explain why earlier searches missed it, even if they passed right over it. The canyons create acoustic shadows that can hide huge objects. In some places, the seafloor drops off so sharply that wreckage could have slid into deep cracks beyond the reach of any search equipment. The evidence was now pointing to a single, forgotten place on the map, a place the official search ignored. But not everyone was ready to believe it, and the pushback from the establishment was just beginning. Correlation versus causation. The truth was finally coming out, but many people in power did not want to hear it. Radio frequency experts, the people who have spent their entire lives studying how signals travel, immediately raised big questions about Godfrey's work. To them, the idea of detecting a plane with WSPR seemed impossible. Their main argument was about signal strength. They said that any disturbance a plane flying at 35,000 feet would make to these faint radio signals would be incredibly tiny. So small it would be like trying to hear a whisper during a hurricane. Dr. Mike Willis, a radar engineer, argued that the signals would be many orders of magnitude too weak to be separated from all the background noise from the atmosphere and equipment glitches. The ionosphere, the layer of the atmosphere that these radio waves bounce off of, is always changing. The sun, the weather, and even the time of day can create constant fluctuations. Skeptics argued that trying to find a tiny, plane-made disturbance in all that chaos was a fool's errand. They also questioned the statistics. They pointed out that if you have enough data, and remember, Godfrey analyzed 200 billion records, you can eventually find patterns that look real but are just coincidences. This is known as cherry-picking. The doubters suggested that with such a massive amount of data, you could probably pick out anomalies to support almost any flight path you wanted. Without other scientists checking his work and getting the same results, they argued it was just speculation, not science. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau, which led the original search, remained very cautious. Their official response was to say the idea was innovative, but needed to be proven with established methods. What many people overlooked, however, is that while these criticisms sound convincing, they don't actually prove Godfrey is wrong. The critics focus on how probable or sensitive the method is, not whether it's physically possible. The fact is, radio waves do bounce off airplanes. Big metal objects do scatter signals. The real question isn't if it happens, but if we can detect it accurately. Was the initial search for MH370 a tragic mistake? or a deliberate distraction. Let us know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more mysteries.